Okay, so our story starts out in 1985 chronologically with Carl Sagan. However, the story's best told working our way backward. So let's begin with a fan favorite of everyone. Things like this are nothing new. We've all become accustomed to it. However, be careful what you say on Twitter or daddy might step in. During the 2020 campaign election, the now Texas congressman tweeted about Joe Biden's cognitive ability, urging the then Democrat candidate to take a mental exam. 20 minutes later, he received an email from Obama that read, you were the personal physician to the president of the United States, as well as an admiral in the US Navy. I expect better, and I hope upon reflection that you will expect more of yourself in the future. Now, you have to ask yourself, is he just protecting his party? Is he just sticking up for his buddy? Or protecting shared interest? Well, what shared interest am I referring to? How about Sleepy Joe's Green New Deal and the fact that Obama put $150 billion into the solar industry back when he was president. But Obama's not the only one to protect his shared interest. Joe is so committed that he's willing to eat crow on behalf of the regular Joes like you and I. For example, let's compare his feelings when an American journalist was brutally murdered in Saudi Arabia and his recent showdown with a person he thought ordered the hit. Khashoggi was in fact murdered and dismembered and I believe in the order of the Crown Prince. And I would make it very clear, we were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. There's very little social redeeming value of the, in the present uh, government in Saudi Arabia. They have to be held accountable. Pretty powerful stuff, huh? Several days back, Joe went to meet with the Prince of Saudi Arabia to see if he could help bring down fuel costs, despite his feelings. You know, that must have been hard pretending on our behalf. The, the thing that I can't figure and, and gets me to scratch my head is the fact that even at full output, Saudi Arabia would only contribute about 3% of the oil. I don't know. Was it just for show? Meanwhile in Holland, the everyday Joes were contending with the ramifications of the Green New Deal. A story that hasn't got much attention is what is, has been happening in Holland because of EU climate policies. James? So, massive protests going on here in the Netherlands right now where Dutch farmers are protesting against rules that would limit carbon and nitrogen emissions out of their farms. Massive, massive protests. They're blocking highways. They're blocking traffic. What you didn't hear mentioned in that video clip is the fact that it's all surrounding fertilizer or the lack thereof, which means about 50% of the farmers will lose their business. But is it the Green New Deal that's gone global or is it something more? Well, we know about the food, energy and financial crisis that's crippled the country. But you argue the underlying cause of the mayhem is that the nation's political leaders had fallen under the spell of green elites peddling ESG. So the key word there was ESG. If you're not familiar with it, it means environmental and social guidance. So let me give you a really good example of this. We look at corporations in the United States and we say, look how woke they are. The ESG scores are held over the head of these corporations by large investment firms who will withdraw their holdings if these corporations don't score high enough. That's why you see them coming out and making the statements that they do. So it can't just be about the Green New Deal and the environment. After all, Carl Sagan told us how to address climate change back in 1985. The idea that we should uh, immediately stop burning fossil fuel 
has uh, such severe economic consequences that no one, of course, will take it seriously. But there are many other things that can be done. There are alternative energy sources, uh, some of which are uh, useful, uh, at least locally. Um, solar power is certainly one that might be of more general use. Safe fission power plants, which are uh, in principle possible. Uh, and then on a longer time scale, uh, the prospect of fusion uh, power. Fission and fusion power plants, uh, in principle, uh, vent no infrared active gases, and therefore, uh, whatever other problems they may provide, they do not provide a greenhouse problem. For those of you dying to know, fission is splitting an atom, fusion is joining atoms. With that out of the way, so that was a statement from Carl Sagan to Congress, but that was 40-ish years ago. I wonder what we've learned since then. France actually gets twice as much of its electricity from clean zero emission sources than does Germany. And yet France pays half as much, almost half as much for its electricity. How can that be? Well, you might have already anticipated the answer. France gets most of its electricity from nuclear power, about 75% in total. And nuclear just ends up being a lot more reliable, generating power 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for about 90% of the year. We see this phenomenon show up at a global level. So for example, there's been a natural experiment over the last 40 years, even more than that, in terms of the deployment of nuclear and the deployment of solar. You can see that at a little bit higher cost, we got about half as much electricity from solar and wind than we did from nuclear. Well, what does all this mean for going forward? I think one of the most significant findings to date is this one. Had Germany spent $580 billion on nuclear instead of renewables, it would already be getting 100% of, of its electricity from clean energy sources and all of its transportation energy. So, in the end, are we witnessing a long-term agenda that dismisses a solution, forgives a murdering prince, threatens the livelihood of farmers in Holland, enacts environmental and social guidance that has created chaos in Sri Lanka? Or, or is Carl Sagan just a schmuck? After all, why would our leadership trust the science. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We at the Patriot Think Tank are strong supporters of Article 5 of our Constitution. If you don't know about Article 5, consider following us on some of our social media platforms or post some comments with your questions. We'll be happy to take the time to answer them. Thank you and bye for now.